Are you dating a fearful avoidant partner and wondering how to transition your relationship to the next level? Well, in today's video, we are going to explore challenges, but also some strategies for transitioning into a much more committed relationship and loving partnership, particularly with a fearful avoidant attachment style. So we will cover first and foremost in today's video why this is so difficult for a fearful avoidant attachment style, why the actual transition into some deeper commitment can actually be tricky and challenging. This will then help you become stronger and better together with this awareness should this be a healthy and correct relationship for you. We will talk about some really core points at the root cause level so that you cannot personalize their behavior as well. And then most importantly, we will talk about how to have the tough conversation. I will actually share with you in more detail um, some tips and tools for having this conversation, tips and tools in your relationship with a fearful avoidant overall. But the goal for you today is to have a much deeper understanding and for you to feel like you can really be equipped to thrive in this particular situation. So one thing you need to know before we even begin exploring this topic with a fearful avoidant attachment style is that we are all programmed. We all have a conscious mind and a subconscious and unconscious mind that essentially together form this big warehouse of information. Now, one of the big differences between the subconscious and unconscious mind is that we can actually retrieve information from the subconscious mind in a way that is very difficult to do from our unconscious mind. Now, when you have your conscious mind, that part that you are thinking is yourself, your logical, rational thinking self, that part of you, the sort of I am part that you can observe and rationalize and consciously and critically think from, that aspect of yourself is responsible for roughly three to five percent of your thoughts, emotions, behaviors, decisions, and essentially beliefs about relationships as a whole. And your subconscious and unconscious collectively are responsible for 95 to 97%. So what we have to understand is once we know that information, we realize that, wow, we can get into a relationship dynamic and say, I want a healthy relationship, or I want to stop struggling with anger, or I want to stop fearing commitment. We can have all these wants, but those are conscious mind wants. The real programming and the real things that are going to impact our relationship are subconscious. And when we understand this about other people, it allows us to not take their behavior so personally, but also to foster a much deeper understanding of them. So when we look at a fearful avoidant attachment style, particularly at their subconscious programs, they tend to have different, in fact, completely opposing subconscious associations or beliefs about the very same thing which is love and connection. On one hand, because they've had a lot of positive experiences with love and connection, they have some programs that say love and connection is positive. It's a healthy thing. It's something I want and I yearn for. And on the other hand, they have a lot of fear because they've usually had a lot of really challenging experiences around love and connection, whether it was seeing a really rough divorce in the family, whether it was seeing a lot of chaos and fighting or betrayal trauma. And so fearful avoidance tend to think some negative things about love and connection almost as much as they think positive things. In fact, sometimes even more than they think positive things about love and connection. And so what happens in particular for fearful avoidance, which we haven't actually talked about on this channel before, is that those conflicting ideas are most often projected onto the future. Fearful avoidance can be quite good at seeing where their partner is, how they're showing up in the present moment. They can, you know, acknowledge and appreciate things about their partner. But the unresolved pain points from past experiences will often be things that get projected outward. I'll give you an example. I've heard fearful avoidance many, many times when talking about bigger commitments, say things like, yeah, things are great now, but I can't know what's going to happen 20 years from now. And that's an example of, you know, the, these fears that can project it onto the very far future, even if things are really good right now. Now we can actually rein that in and we can actually see that as early as the dating stage of a relationship, when you are first getting to know somebody dating them and the relationships unfolding, even as early as that early stage, I will see fearful avoidance say things like, yeah, things are great right now, but yeah, I don't know what's going to happen six months from now. I don't know if we make a commitment, if they're going to betray me, or how can I really trust that this will work out? And so a lot of these deep rooted fears are actually the root cause for why a fearful avoidant attachment style can sort of start backtracking when things get more serious in relationships. And once you understand this, the idea would be that you realize 
this isn't about you or you not being good enough or the quality of your relationship if you're the loved one of a fearful avoidant, but instead understanding that, you know what, there's more here that's going on. And a lot of when I see my fearful avoidant attachments to a loved one pushing away or holding back or pumping the brakes, a lot of it is really, really fear-based. Now, if you are in a situation where there is a lot of fear from a loved one, we want to be able to empathize with that person 100%. It's only going to foster more health in the relationship. And it's only going to end up making you somebody who um, does not personalize things, doesn't feel as insecure in the relationship and so on. But we also have to be mindful that we don't weaponize our own empathy against ourselves. And I say this with all attachment styles, right? Like if you're somebody who sees, you know, what somebody's experiencing or going through that you love and care about, but then you allow that empathy to be something where you're like, okay, I'm going to deny my own needs because they're going through a hard time. Now, all of a sudden we get into sacrificing codependent behavior, and that's actually going to lead to the demise of the relationship anyways, because codependent behavior leads to resentment and frustration, which will lead to more arguing and criticism. And again, you will definitely see the relationship fall to its, its sort of downfall in that experience. So what we want to be able to do is you want to be able to empathize and not personalize somebody else's behavior while making sure that you're still advocating for your own needs in a healthy and respectful way. So how we can do this is you can start by having a conversation with a fearful avoidant. Generally, I do not see fearful avoidant attachment styles and relationships want to make a commitment to some sort of monogamous relationship until at least three months in. Um, even if they have moments where they think of that, you know, six weeks in, two months in, they may develop strong feelings. They may be fast movers, fearful avoidance in terms of the depth of connection, but they do not tend to be fast movers in terms of um, how quickly they want to make a commitment. Okay. So it may feel like the, the relationship's moving at light speed, but I often joke with fearful avoidance on this channel, like fearful avoidance want to act like they're in a relationship without actually being fully in a relationship a lot of the time, because once they've made that commitment to a relationship, it's, it really highlights the fears and all their, their p potential painful concerns about, um, what could go wrong that then get projected into the future. So you know, you may see a lot of momentum, but first and foremost, I think it's healthy anyways to wait until about three months before making a commitment to somebody. Everybody will be different because of culture, because of religion, because of personal preference, because of past programs. And I very much respect that. Um, but I do think that there's a, a certain degree of importance, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, of just being able to properly vet somebody, make sure that you can hash out conversations, make sure that you can communicate properly with this person, make sure that you can see momentum building, make sure that the person has important standards that are, are valuable for you to have in a relationship, like respect, authenticity, loyalty, you know, whatever it might be for you there. Um, and making sure that there aren't any non-negotiables. You know, I, I've seen many relationships in my practice, far more than you would probably imagine, um, where people would be like, yeah, um, we've been together for five years and one person wants kids, the other person doesn't want kids. And they come to this sort of breaking point in the relationship where it's like, well, we knew this at the beginning, but we both thought each other would change. So, you know, we really have to take that part of things quite seriously and be mindful about it. So, how do you have this conversation to actually advocate for your needs? If you're wanting more commitment from your fear flow and loved one, but you are seeing that it's been a couple months in, you know, you've done the vetting, but you're not seeing the needle move. Well, number one, you want to start by just having an introductory conversation. If you go from zero to 60 and you go right into like, are we committed? I need to know right now. You're less likely to really see, um, a lot of benefits to that conversation because fearful avoidance don't like to be pressured and they don't like a lot of expectations. But again, that doesn't mean don't communicate your needs. So one of the healthy balanced things to do is to start off when you're feeling ready for a commitment to say something like, Hey, I'm really enjoying our connection. I value my time. And I want to know that this is going to end up as something. I want to know that we're moving in the right direction and that we're on the same page with that, because I really want to protect my time if you're not seeing that and you're not seeing this directionally move that way. So if you have a conversation like that and you just let the person know that you need to know that there's going to be momentum and growth in the relationship dynamic, that you value your time, you just need to know you're on the same page with that. That is something that is not going to trigger a lot of the fearful avoidance fears, but it's also going to help them see 
oh, those are your needs. That's something important to you. And I'm going to have to prepare to rise to that occasion to support that going forward. Okay. So that's a, a really big first step. A little bit after, if you don't see the needle move within a couple of weeks, if you don't see that there is a greater commitment, you don't see that there's momentum building that way, you can let the person know, hey, I, you know, I, I communicated this before. I'm really ready to make a commitment. I'm hoping that's something that we can get on the same page around in the next couple of weeks. So you start giving them a little bit more of a deadline the next couple of weeks. And you also are saying, this is something I'm ready for. I brought it up. And then the vast majority of the time, if a fearful avoidant is ready to invest, they're going to overcome like their, their fear-based side in that space to be able to show up. And in a sense, that is a form of vetting, right? In a sense, that is you being able to see, is this somebody who's willing to work through their fears to show up for this relationship? And that's going to be imp an important milestone and rite of passage going forward. And something that you want to be paying attention to as, as a loved one from a fearful avoidant. And then if you still don't see momentum a few weeks later, you can have a bit of a stronger conversation. And I would say this should really be the last conversation, but this is going to be something that if you're somebody who wants commitment, certainty, you know that this is really important for you. You want to be have, having this conversation honestly and transparently. You want to be making room for your needs because if we don't, that's going to spoil the relationship long-term anyways, as I keep mentioning. So you want to, number three, say, Hey, I really love our connection. I don't want to walk away from this because of that, but I do have to honor my needs in the relationship. And I'm not really seeing the needle moving towards a commitment. And so if this isn't something that happens in the very near future, I really am just going to take the message from you that that's not something you're looking for. And I will have to protect myself, honor myself and respect what's important to me by moving away from this relationship dynamic. And by saying it that way, it's not threatening. It's kind. You're just inserting yourself. You're letting the person know, hey, I'm willing to take up space. I'm a, I'm a human being just like you are. And my needs are meaningful in this type of conversation. And so this will be a really important rite of passage. Now, Generally, what I will see is that fearful avoidance rise to that occasion and they do show up. Um, fearful avoidance are very growth oriented. You know, they tend to be very open to people having conversations about fears and concerns, and they tend to want to show up for their partners and loved ones because they deeply care about love and connection. If you see that your fearful avoidant loved one is saying, that's something I want too, but I'm afraid please make sure that you ask them, what are your fears? Let's talk about them. Let's challenge them together. Let's see what we can do to mitigate those fears together in the relationship. If they say, I'm afraid that we'll grow apart. Great. What can we do to mitigate those fears in advance? What habits can we install in the relationship? Can we make sure we're having a weekly date night? Can we make sure we have quality time together? What are the things that you can do to help overcome those things together? And when the fearful avoidance sees that a lot of those fears are in fact quite solvable problems, that will also help them build a tremendous amount of momentum. Now, that's pretty much it for today. I will say if you want to do a deeper dive into um, communicating through these painful and challenging moments in relationships with the fearful avoidant, I actually have a course um, for every attachment style dating a fearful avoidant, and it goes through all the different pain points, challenges, um, and, and it's actually free for seven days. So just for a limited time, we're going to be doing that now. Um, I will put a link in the description box below, but it's like the anxious preoccupied with the fearful avoidant attachment style, the dismissive avoidant with the fearful avoidant and all the relationship challenges, pain points, and exactly a roadmap for how to overcome those things and when you can be expecting them. Um, so hopefully that makes a whole lot of sense. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much for watching and for stopping by. If you're enjoying this channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I can't wait to see you in future videos.